All right, let's talk about the pros and cons of Dunedin, Florida. Here we go. I'm Sam and thanks for coming by the Living in Tampa channel where we make these videos for you about what it's like to live and move to Tampa. We also would love a chance to earn your real estate business. Give us a call, text, or email anytime if you're looking to buy or sell in the Tampa area. People contact us every day and this is often one of the places they ask about. And I'm always surprised if they say the name correctly. I actually got married in Dunedin and my parents kept calling it Dunedin as we were like sending out invitations. I'm like, mom, dad, it's not Dunedin, it's Dunedin. And they're like, how would we know? It's, it's a good point, it's a good point, I, I understand. But Dunedin is super popular, we talk about it a lot. About 50,000 people in this little area, and it is a pretty little area. So just to the north of Dunedin, you have Palm Harbor. Just to the south and to the east, you have Clearwater. Now, the edges of those areas, where, so Palm Harbor on the edge of Dunedin and Clearwater on the edge of Dunedin feel pretty similar to Dunedin and have really easy access to it. And there's a lot of reasons why people really love Dunedin, but I wanna do some like pros and cons and talk through a couple of different scenarios for you. Con number one is prices. Prices are super high in Dunedin. And then there's a couple areas that are, allow short-term rentals and those prices just skyrocket. You'll see places that are, are shockingly listed for like hundreds of thousands more than you would imagine. And it's typically because they allow Airbnb. Now there is a lot more potential to make money on that house and that's why they're, they're priced like that. And they, they sell eventually usually for cheaper than what they're looking for, but those are just people kind of fishing for a buyer. So for example, my home in Tarpon Springs that I paid 292 for in September of 2020, right now in May of 2023 is worth about 440 to 460. That same house in Dunedin would have appreciated the same kind of way, you know, 50% plus over that two and a half years, but it would have just started so much higher. So instead of 292, it would have been 400,000 from the beginning for a three bedroom house. And it's just more and more expensive. And because this area is pretty small with quite a few people so interested in this area, prices just keep going up. Con number two in Dunedin is that there's a lot of old houses. Now, old houses have their, their perks. They're charming, they're, they're super cute. They're kind of quirky and you might really like that. I live in a 60 year old house right now and I kind of like a lot of it. Now there's more maintenance involved than a typical house, than, than a newer house, but it's still kind of fun. A lot of people ask me like, why is this old house more expensive than this brand new house? And I don't really have a good re reason for that. The reality is just old houses don't get discounted. If they have modern electric, modern plumbing, then they're kind of viewed as a more modern house, even though they have you know wood frame and they have asbestos siding and, and stuff like that. So in this area, you're gonna have a lot of old houses and you're not gonna see much of a discount on that because it's old. Now you've gotta just like old houses and you've gotta have more money to live in this area. But when we get to the pros, you'll see why it might be worth those things. Okay, con number three, not a lot of HOAs in Dunedin, but you do have a very picky city, especially in terms of aesthetics. So when it comes to like having chickens or stuff like that, no big deal. But when it comes to like cutting your grass, like if your grass is too long, you'll get fined. Little things like that. So you're, you might be looking at this area because there's not HOAs, but the city kind of functions like an HOA. And I've even seen reports that over a five year period, they had like a million dollars in aesthetic fines. So that would be like just your grass is too long, your landscaping doesn't meet the requirements. I don't even know what all these requirements are, but they are an issue. Okay, con number four is insurance costs. Now, insurance in Florida is a disaster in so many ways. The recent video about that linked up above, just kind of going into some of what's happening. There's a lot of Dunedin that doesn't require flood insurance, but it's still right on the Gulf Coast. Your insurance costs are gonna be higher. If you're in an older house, they're gonna be even higher. So for example, my house in Tarpon Springs, super low. My homeowners and flood combined is about 5,500. I was talking to one of my neighbors, his house is built up higher, but it's an old house built in 1915. He doesn't have flood insurance, but his homeowners is 5,500. So his total cost is the same as mine, even though he doesn't have flood insurance. That is just the effect of having an old house close to the water. So if you're looking at Dunedin, you have to keep those things in mind. All right, and the last con for Dunedin is weekend visitors. Now this is super common around the Tampa area. These kind of 
charming little towns all on the coast that have something that draws people in like the water or some kind of event or some kind of touristy thing. These areas have a lot of weekend traffic. Now, super fun to go visit these places, obviously. If you live there though, it feels kind of confusing. I even have this vibe sometimes in Tarpon Springs where it's like, uh, it's Saturday, I don't understand why all of these people are here. Oh yeah, they're here for this. And there's always something like that in Dunedin where you're gonna get a lot of that outside weekend traffic. All right, now let's hop into the pros. Super, super charming town. Pro number one, super charming. One of my clients asked me recently, why do, why do people say quaint about Dunedin all the time? And he was kind of annoyed by that, but it kind of fits the bill. It's a quaint little town, even though it's 50,000 people, it just has a special vibe to it. It does. And some of that's the old houses, some of that's the water, and some of that is probably the aesthetic enforcements that the city is doing to make sure it's all kind of looking polished and looking cohesive in some way. Okay, pro number two, there are amazing walkable areas in Dunedin. So the Pinellas Trail, which goes all the way north and south across the county, goes right through the middle of downtown Dunedin. Sometimes we'll go to a park, we'll go down to like Weaver Park, you see here on the map, and then we'll take the trail, walk on the trail to downtown, eat, but walk back to the park, get in our car and go home. And that kind of accomplishes a few things. We get to play at the park a little bit, we get a little walk in, we have a fun dinner, and we don't have to park downtown. That's, that's probably the fourth thing. We don't have to park downtown. So it's not just walkable and it's like you have to live there, then, then you can walk to stuff. You could park somewhere and then walk to all kinds of stuff in Dunedin. That's a super unique thing. Like you could park on one side of the town and walk around. Or if you did live close to those things, you could walk to a lot of things. Or ride a bike. I should say walkable and bikeable. My kids aren't old enough to really ride bikes yet. So I don't really think of things as bikeable. But that is a big factor here. If you lived even outside of Dunedin, you could ride a bike into Dunedin pretty easily on this trail or another one. All right, pro number three is there's a lot of water in Dunedin. You got Edgewater Park, which is right over there by the marina, with cool restaurants like Bon Appetit, things like that over there on the water. And then you see from these shots, you have Edgewater Drive that runs south of downtown Dunedin all the way down into Clearwater. Super pretty drive right along the coast. And then out from this coast, you have Caladesi Island, which is a state preserve. They'll never build anything out there. So you have this beautiful natural view from Dunedin that's a little bit different than the views you get from like Clearwater, Largo, all those towns down there. Okay, pro number four, access to Clearwater. So Clearwater is kind of a hub for a lot of things in the area. Now, whether that's just like Costco and Whole Foods or the mall or even just getting into Tampa, going through Clearwater is really valuable. But the way that Dunedin is situated, it's really easy access over to all those kind of amenities. But it's also kind of nice that they're not in your town. So you, you have easy access to them, but they're not like cluttering up your own town. I like that. All right, and then pro number five is property appreciation. So we talked about prices as a con, but property appreciation is a pretty positive thing. If you buy a house, you wanna sell it in a few years, and you know that there's this unique demand for this area that's a little bit out of your control, that's super valuable. Dunedin definitely has that. So if you buy a house, honestly, I don't wanna overstate. Yeah, the market goes up and down, of course, but Dunedin's pretty strong. As always, we would love to connect with you and we'd love a chance to earn your real estate business. Give us a call, text, or email anytime. Thanks for coming by.